Ever since I was young, I've always loved science. It just fascinated me, the idea that it was boundless and never-ending. And I soon realized that none of us will ever discover everything about our universe anytime soon, or frankly, ever. And my interest in science led me to participate in many science competitions. During one of these science competitions, I was studying anatomy and came across the topic of chronic wounds. At first, I was like, what is a chronic wound? It turns out that a chronic wound is a wound which does not heal for months or even years. They range from diabetic ulcers to whole body infections. To give you a scale of the problem, in the United States, which has a population of 320 million people, the number of patients with chronic wounds is higher than the number of patients with lung cancer, breast cancer, leukemia, and colon cancer combined. It is estimated that around 2% of the world's population suffers from a chronic wound, and worldwide, $50 billion are spent each year on the treatment of chronic wounds alone. However, despite the clear severity of the problem, little research has been done in this area in comparison to other medical fields. As I began to read closer, I found that studies show that there's a correlation between moisture content in the wound and what stage of healing the wound is in. I also found that changing the dressing of a chronic wound too early or too late can make the wound worse. Thus, I reasoned if you can monitor the moisture level of the wound continuously, you'd be able to better manage the entire healing process. I looked at existing devices and found that they were oftentimes expensive, costly, and even non-biocompatible. So I thought, why can't I build my own? So I set up my criteria as well as my constraints. My criteria being a low prototyping cost, all materials being biocompatible and readily available, it should be environmentally friendly, and most importantly, it should produce accurate and reliable results. But since I was 14 and working out of my garage, I didn't have bacteria, pathogens, and I also had little scientific equipment. Around the same time, I was also studying nanoparticles. Nanoparticles are particles which range in size from 1 to 100 nanometers, with a single strand of human hair being approximately 80,000 to 100,000 nanometers wide. So it struck me, if I could make a carbon nanoparticle ink and then print my device out of a standard household inkjet printer, I'd be one step closer to meeting all of my criteria. So using all of these biocompatible materials, I designed my first schematic and eventually my first prototype. Unfortunately, due to the nature of nanoparticles being so tiny, they would tend to clump together, jamming my inkjet cartridges and even entire inkjet printers. I know I had to solve this, so I introduced a sonification bath, which essentially shook them up and disperse them throughout the solvent so that I could finally print my sensors. However, I had a larger problem. Since in the beginning, I'd chosen kind of arbitrary designs, I had no control over the sensor. In order to finally get control over the sensor and increase the sensor's reliability, I introduced a subset of fractals called space-filling curves. These curves aim to take up all the space within a given unit area. And by incorporating these patterns into my design, I finally emerged with my first working prototype after two years of working on this project. But I wasn't done yet. <laughs> by attaching this to a Bluetooth chip, the sensor could finally communicate with another mobile device, and it would be able to show you readings and tell you exactly when to change your dressing. However, as I neared the end of this, I realized that my device is not that amazing compared to the journey that I had been on. I got into the fields of science at the ripe old age of three, 
And I would drag my parents to my local science museum almost every single day. And I wouldn't leave the chemistry lab there until I'd finished each and every single experiment. While my early interests were in mathematics and chemistry, I quickly found that all the fields of science are connected. And in order to solve the complex problems the world has to offer us, we need an understanding of all those fields. And that's why I think this project became a combination of chemistry, physics, mathematics, computer science, electrical engineering, and medicine. However, no ship on a long journey sails smoothly. And throughout this project, I hit many hurdles. Some were scientific, like the ones I discussed earlier, while others were more social. I found the scientific hurdles I easily passed by just thinking through new concepts, exploring more ideas, conducting more trials. However, the social problems are a lot harder to pass, since age, experience, and access to oftentimes expensive equipment carry a lot of weight in the scientific community. And while it took a lot of time and effort to break those boundaries, I eventually received encouragement, help, advice, and mentorship from some of the most accomplished in the scientific community. And so I came to realize that ultimately, being 14 didn't matter. Thank you.